Okay, welcome to the first installment of the videos that review hepatic disease and its effect on pharmacokinetics. Uh, quickly, um, by watching these videos, you should be able to describe the determinants of hepatic clearance, provide examples of how these determinants might be altered um, by drugs, diseases, or other factors, um, predict the effects of changes in liver blood flow, intrinsic clearance, or protein binding on the pharmacokinetics of a drug cleared by the liver. And then you also should be able to list what changes would occur in the hepatic and cirrhotic liver disease in hepatitis, I'm sorry, in cirrhotic liver disease. Predict how these changes would alter pharmacokinetics and determine a child Pew score and determine a new dosing regimen for a drug in a given patient with hepatic disease and describe how hepatic diseases would affect the particular SIP families. This first section I'm going to review um, the definition of clearance and hepatic clearance in general. So clearance is the volume of blood from which the drug is completely removed in that blood in a given time. So that's why it's a volume per time unit. So for liver clearance in particular, you have your liver here, you have blood coming in at a certain rate Q with a concentration here of the drug, which is called your arterial concentration of drug coming into the liver. Some drug may or may not be eliminated by the liver um, through metabolism. We also know that there can be biliary clearance. This is just metabolism, okay? And then uh, the blood will go out with your um, blood flow and your venous concentration. So if there is drug removed, then your arterial concentration will always be bigger than your venous concentration. It also assumes there's no irreversible binding of the drug to the liver. Okay. So remember, according to the Wellster jar, this should look somewhat familiar. We have Q times E for the clearance of our, uh, our hepatic clearance, and we can use this model to describe our extraction efficiency. Q is liver blood flow. Normal liver blood flow, we use 90. Traditionally, it can range between 60, and this should really say 90. Some literature says 80. Um, so clearance by that organ would never be able to be larger than whatever the blood flow to that organ is, right? You can never uh, package up more milk from the dairy than what's being delivered, right? So if we think of the Q as, as the milk coming into the, to the milk to the dairy, we never can have more manufacturing than that's always going to be all, your ultimate um, limiting step. Your cirrhosis can cause a decrease in Q. We talked about this briefly already, but um, cirrhosis can decrease your Q because remember, in cirrhotic disease, the um, cells are destroyed, the normal liver blood, no, normal, normal liver, liver cells are destroyed and replaced with scar tissue, and therefore the blood really can't flow normally uh, through the liver. So you have an effective decrease in blood flow. Okay, the other determinants of clearance here, we talked about Q. Now we're going to talk about intrinsic clearance. Remember, intrinsic clearance for the liver we really think of as enzyme activity. So, and remember the determinants of your enzyme activity is the capacity of the system, Vmax, so it's the maximal rate of metabolism for a given metabolic pathway. Your KM, which is your your dissociation constant, which gives you a read on the affinity. So this is the capacity of the system. KM is the affinity, the concentration of drug in the liver at which the rate of metabolism is half maximal. So it's a concentration where you reach half max. The lower the KM, the higher the affinity. The higher the KM, the, the lower the affinity. So it's really a, a dissociation constant. Um, and then concentration also can be a determinant of intrinsic clearance. Usually, con the concentrations you reach in the therapeutic range are much lower than your KM. And if that's the case, this, in effect, falls out. Um, so really, only Vmax and KM determine your enzyme activity. If concentration is close to KM, then it has to be considered. This gives you nonlinearity in the therapeutic range. 
What happens to intrinsic clearance in um, liver disease? Well, you see a decrease in Vmax. Remember, we talked about the fact that the enzymes will be destroyed because of the tissue destruction. So you're going to have a decrease in the number of enzymes available. And also, oxidative pathways um, appear to be more affected than the conjunctive pathways. So the, the P450 system is going to be more affected than uh, the conjugation stuff like glucuronidation, et cetera, acetylation. Phase two are not as affected as the phase one. Okay, determinants of hepatic clearance. We're back. We talked about Q. We talked about intrinsic clearance. We did not talk yet about binding. This is, of course, the fraction unbound in plasma, which you're well aware of. What determines binding? Again, we have another Michaelis-Menten equation, right? Capacity, affinity, concentration. Okay. Are there changes in the amount of proteins around for binding? Is there a change in affinity? Are there changes in the concentration? All those things can affect binding. How does hepatic disease affect binding? Well, there's a decrease in the binding capacity because there can be decreases in both albumin and AAG. In some cases, there could be increases in AAG as well, but there will likely be decreases in albumin. There also will be decreases in binding affinity because bilirubin has a very high affinity for the binding protein. So bilirubin could displace um, a drug from its binding site because there's more of that around than normally. Other toxins, again, that are not re being removed by the liver as they usually are could, again, be competing for those binding sites. Um, I think we will stop right, well, let's quickly talk about this. High and low extraction drugs. I know you guys wanted to review this. Remember, high extraction drugs are when the extraction efficiency is greater than or equal to 0.65, and low extraction drugs are somewhere around less than 0.3. Remember, E is going to be between 0 and 1, right? This is your extraction efficiency. Intermediate are in between. If we have high extraction drugs, we can make some assumptions. If we have low extraction drugs, we can make some assumptions. Um, if they're in between, then we have to consider the whole big, sorry, this whole big equation, right, if they're in between. If they're high or low, we can make some assumptions and get this down to be a little more manageable to make some um, predictions. Here's some examples of high and low extraction drugs. This is not an exhaustive list, as you know, but uh, these drugs have high extraction uh, elimination in the liver, and these drugs, low extraction. Okay. I'm going to stop right here and get you on the next one. Bye.